Again last time, <laughs> I'm gonna get it. Welcome to the second in the series of videos buying art on budget. Um, the last one and the only one was two years ago. Uh, I decided to, you know, improve myself and do another. As you can see, I got a bit older, I got some glasses. It happens. It also got a little bit of a belly. Uh, the video did not improve. My girlfriend is just holding her phone as steady as she can. We are playing Mozart to camouflage her breathing. Uh, but I still hope I can teach you something. Um, this time around, I don't want to do like 10 tips, but I want to talk about a casus of a painting I bought. It's a painting that you see here behind me. It's a painting from Hendrik Willibord Janssen. He was a painter from the end of the 19th century. He died around 1907-1908. And he was quite famous at the time. He won multiple prizes. Uh, he had a lot of exhibitions. He was part of all the um, clubs, societies, let's say. Um, but after his death, he's kind of forgotten. There's still like once every 10 years there's an exposition and a smaller museum, but that's it. It's like the opposite of Vincent van Gogh, who lived in the same time, uh, who nobody knew, but after his death he became boom, for good reasons. So this painting, uh, I found it on auction, on an auction in the neighborhood. Uh, I want to advise to you, don't buy too much on online auctions like Cataliki. Uh, they usually ask too much, uh, because everyone is their target audience, so you know, they think, we can ask it, so let's do it. Sometimes you can find some gems there, so I'm not saying never look on there, but uh, local auctions are mostly better priced. If you want to know if you pay too much, you can get a subscription at this site like artprice.com, and they have like a data bank of the history of the prices where you can check out how much the other person uh, paid for it or how much a painting and other painting from the same painter is worth. So this one I found on an auction. Um, actually in the after sale nobody wanted it and I'm going to show you why. You can see this big heavy golden uh, brocante gold cast frame that was around it. It was very heavy. Uh, the painting itself was very dark actually, even darker than you see now. Uh, so I see why no one wanted it, but I did think like, hey, it's an, it's an interesting painter, it's an interesting setting, I'm gonna buy it. It was quite cheap, I think I paid 400 euros for it. So I took it home, I took off the frame um, to let it be reframed, but I did not throw the frame away because on the frame you see the stickers of all the expositions it has been. So if ever a museum comes for you like, hey, can we borrow your painting for an exposition? They usually want to have it with the original frame. So that might be a tip, keep the frame. Um, what I did then is that I uh, got this thing that you put in your ear, I'm not sure about the English name, you put it in your mouth and you just check how dirty the painting is. When I did this with this painting, it was all black, so I knew like it has been hanging somewhere for 100 years with probably people smoking too much. Um, with oil paintings, they always have a layer of varnish, so don't be afraid you're not damaging the painting that quickly. So uh, I had it restored, I had it reframed, it cost me about 700 euros, so I paid 1100 euros for this painting total. I think that's a good price. Um, it's not the only painting I have from this painter and if you want to be more relevant in the scene of Musea it's good to be known as a collector of a certain painter, certain artist, you know, so uh, you can just let Musea know you're doing an exposition on this, I have four or five paintings and it's a nice way to make business in this world. The next thing I did was I was going to look for more literature on this painter and I wanted to know exactly when he painted it so I could give this painting a bit more context. It seems that in 1903 he was in Venice and he went to the uh, Basilic of Santa Marco and he um, 
make also this painting of the square outside and he made this inside. Another thing I did, uh, which I unfortunately can't show you, is I was checking for damages. Uh, what I did is I put on all the light, I got a UV light, they're not expensive to buy, and you just scan throughout the painting. If something lights up, it's usually because the paint has a different age than the paint under it. Uh, so you see like a discoloration, uh, so you know if there's been restorations made in the past. It doesn't have to be a bad thing, but sometimes it's done in a poor way. I hope that my journey from buying this painting gave you uh, an, an insight in the multiple perspectives on how to approach a painting and not always go for the one painting that looks like you know the one that everybody wants but to try to look at the potential of a painting like what 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 is this historical meaning how does it fit in a genre how can it look if i put some money and effort in it um, I'm really happy with this one. Second video of the now officially called series. Let's see when is my next one. Maybe I have like gray hair. Let's find out. Uh, thank you again for watching.